at or about. You can join us. At or about, I see you. Sure. Welcome. Yeah. We see you, we hear you, we are happy to be with you. Uh, can you start to share your screen? Yeah, we can do that. We see each other. Perfect. Your setup, the stage is yours. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you everybody for taking the time uh, to spend with me to talk about API management. Um, in this very quick session, what I'd like to do is talk about uh, not only just what we're doing with API management, but also how it's applying or helping us as we are bringing our SaaS organizations into the uh, cloud native experience. So I'll begin a little bit with our uh, journey, some of the things that uh, you know we're seeing as an organization. So, uh, for those of you that have not heard of Oracle, very long, uh, you know, running organization. Uh, it started out in the traditional software space. So, in the past, we were delivering products. You know, you had very long release cycles. You know, it's a transactional process, things like that. And and, and the present model, uh, as we see all across uh, the world are services and, and you know very quick releases and more uh, experiential type uh, experiences. And so it, essentially we are delivering on the vision of SaaS to, to be able to do that. Uh, and to do that, we are modernizing a lot of the uh, SaaS portfolio. So just to give you a little bit of background uh, again on Oracle, and I'm gonna kind of go through and just give some highlights is very large company, 40 billion in revenue, uh, operating in 175, you know, countries and serving a lot of customers, over 430,000. But we also have a lot of employees uh, to do that. So you're, you know, close to 140,000, and we're handling a lot of transactions, right? You're talking about uh, 30,000 uh, employee expenses a week, working with 40, you know, thousand suppliers, and then of course. Uh, acquiring other companies too. So we're acquiring, making around 10 to 12 acquisitions a year. So this is a very large operation. And how do we take such a large operation and you know kind of move it uh, not only to the cloud, but also continue to modernize it? So we've been on this journey. We've been doing that. We've achieved some really great successes in helping uh, save ourselves uh, a lot of uh, uh, costs and also being able to uh, reducing some of the time that it takes to perform uh, critical functions and really refocus our employees on more value added processes. So this goes across a bunch of different areas, whether it's finance and HR, uh, whether it's the customer experience, you know, whether it's the business, uh, we've been able to achieve a lot of improvements. So when you take a look at this, this is not just the traditional SaaS to drive this service, what we're doing is we're building out a cloud infrastructure. So a lot of times when people think of Oracle, they're you know looking at kind of the traditional database company, right? You know, that's how Oracle got started, building a database, building and then you know some software and stuff like that. But we've been very actively over the last five years building out what we call Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And first things first is to make sure that we have the regions so that customers can have data uh, or their data located where they need it, not only in the region where they're located for things like uh, government compliance and, and you know, security and things like that, but also to be able to have uh, uh, active, you know, passive failover you know, control and stuff like that, high availability. So, you know, how does this apply to kind of API management? How do we go in, you know, to that line? Well, as we're delivering for SaaS, what we need to do is provide a complete uh, infrastructure capability of cloud services for SaaS to be able to build and deliver based on. And so that's what we have within the cloud services that we offer. And within our serverless space, we've added an API gateway capability because as our teams take the cloud native approach, a big uh, component of the cloud native approach, of course, is to have declarative APIs. So they need to be able to deliver those. So if we delve into the cloud native space, we have a number of you know, technologies that we're working with there. You have the common uh, Kubernetes or containers, uh, you have serverless functions and streaming and events, and we also have API management. 
Now, you know, we have a gateway that we put into our Oracle Cloud infrastructure, but there's, of course, the whole life cycle around that. So a number of years back, we acquired uh, Apiary, which is uh, famous for the API blueprint, uh, also supports um, uh, open API uh, uh, description, and that is used for design and documentation that we'll get into in a moment. Uh, so you, we take that, we kind of wrap that in with the gateway so that customers can uh, design uh, document their APIs, and then of course deploy their APIs and be able to uh, run them on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So the way that I kind of look at uh, the value chain of API management um, is interesting. I was talking with a, a friend um, with uh, API Matic, and he was talking about the three C's of um, um, you know API management. I added the fourth C uh, for communicate. So create, control, consume, uh, and communicate. So we always think of kind of control a lot of times. Something's created, we want to kind of control access to it. But this overall kind of value chain, this life cycle is we ultimately want to get to communicate. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times when people talked about API management, they got into um, revenue generation, right? As in ultimately monetizing APIs. And I think most companies and most uh, uh, organizations don't get into monetizing an API. They may not have a business or a revenue line, but regardless of that, it is important to be able to capture the value. Uh, and so what I always say is you need to, API management helps you capture the value of your code portfolio so that you can communicate that to the stakeholders and so that you can understand you know, how that is uh, serving your business, and then also making sure that you can manage it to the highest uh, quality possible. And so that's our kind of philosophy, or that's what we're, you know, looking at here is essentially to create, so where you may use Apiary control, you know, API gateway, consume Apiary documentation and, and developer portals, and of course, communicate things like analytics, stuff like that. So we begin the design with Apiary, where you have a, a kind of a design capability, and then you have a documentation uh, capability as well provided uh, in there. Get into the gateway where you can go ahead and deploy your APIs to define your uh, security policies and things like that. Uh, and then of course, the way that we build is that everything that we uh, work with in Oracle Cloud infrastructure is not just through a console, but you also have access through uh, the CLI, you know, SDK, Terraform and things like that. Um, an important thing too is logging and analytics, of course. So built into the foundation uh, of Oracle Cloud infrastructure, and of course, including the gateway, is that you have logging and analytics for the, the services that we're running. Uh, you have different levels uh, of analytics as you go through there. You can also dig into the log data. So this is uh, connected into our public logging service so that as you deploy your API, you can monitor how it's running and making sure that everything is, of course, operating successfully. If there are any issues, you can react to that. Um, interestingly enough, though, logs are not enough alone. Logs are a good start. They're good for you know, going in and being able to uh, go in and kind of uh, look at an API, see how it's doing, and you know, be able to respond to anything that you might see uh, in the log. Or if you've encountered an issue, go back and be able to uh, you know, look at the log and, and try to investigate and see what happens. And this is really good for you know, an API developer who goes and deploys the API and you know, chooses to, you know, needs to go in and, and diagnose it or, or monitor it or take a look at it. But as you move an API through the life cycle, you need to have, we need to have an overview of kind of everything that's going on with the APIs and the rest of the technology. And that's kind of where we get into logging analytics and we get into dashboards. So you can start to do trend analysis uh, it, for our APIs and also other services within the infrastructure. And this is hugely important for our SaaS teams because our SaaS teams, they're building, they're building and delivering SaaS and they need to operationalize uh, the SaaS and in the process they're modernizing it. So with that, what I wanna do is I wanna kind of pivot a little bit and talk about one of our internal customers who are you starting to use our API management uh, solutions, our API gateway. And this is the digital experience for communication. So as I mentioned before, Oracle's a very large organization, uh, so large that we actually have what we call global business units. So we have groups within uh, Oracle 
that focus on specific industries. So our communications business unit, they provide a service, which is the digital experience for communications. And this is for uh, telcos to be able to provide capabilities to launch, you know, by uh, provide a service, you know, fulfill orders and of course monetize services for the telco industry. So telco industry moving is moving to 5G. You've heard everything about 5G and as they're going and doing with that. So we have a 5G solution uh, that we offer as a SaaS for telcos to be able to uh, provide their services. So how is that built? Well, first off, there's a multiple and omni-channel experience that we're you know working with, which is uh, being able to handle digital acquisition of customers and things like that, handling the the uh, buying process, and then also to uh, help you know users where they need help and stuff like that for uh, agents of the telco to be able to work with their customers. Uh, so there's this this complete life cycle that they have. So they they build these this life cycle and these capabilities on modular APIs, and those APIs are running against our underlying SaaS uh, uh, products. They're working against things like Fusion ERP, um, you know, customer experience, uh, human capital management, all of these services. And all of this is built and running on uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So <clears throat> when we look at you know, what they're doing, as they were approaching delivering their solution, they needed to make sure that their solution is open. So they work with a TM Forum uh, and basically using the uh, open digital architecture. So they're providing APIs based on the TM Forum APIs that their customers can use uh, and go ahead and interact with. Um, and so that makes them application agnostic. They're able to decouple the experience, work with different systems where needed, all running you know, on our API gateway solution. So what I want to do real quick, I've been moving you know, pretty quickly through the slides simply because I want to see if I can get into a demo. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, my um, editor, which I'm in Apiary. And I just want to show real quick to kind of give you kind of a flavor for what we're looking at uh, in this service. So one of the, the super critical element of uh, API management is really kind of beginning with your design. Uh, you know, open API uh, is, is uh, fastly becoming kind of the, the standard for describing APIs. And I have a simple, you know, uh, API and open API too here based on service tickets. And, you know, in, in Apiary, uh, we generate the documentation and we can generate a mock service. So you can go in and based on your documentation, you can see, uh, you know, what's happening here. So this is well and good. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, sample. So I will uh, pull this. I'll make a change real quick to it in a second because uh, we can kind of see how this changes. And what I did to help us save a little bit of time, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, copy over is I am just going to uh, go ahead and change this. Before I do, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a branch so that I can, uh, you know, work with this and, and you know, for this demo uh, during this project. <clears throat> so Apiary is uh, linked with uh, GitHub. Uh, so we can go in version controller APIs, which is super important. And I'll just go ahead and come in here. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, select that and change that. So I had these two operations before. Now I have some additional uh, you know, operations that I've added to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this uh, and then I'll go ahead and uh, maybe just go ahead and push that real quick. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and save and push that uh, to GitHub. So this is essentially updated uh, in GitHub and I can see if I view my project that I have this over uh, working in GitHub here. Uh, and, and I do have some other um, uh, you know, files around that, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, so one of the things I'll do real quick is I'll go ahead and go over to my uh, local environment and I'll go ahead and um, pull this in. All right, so I'm over, um, you know, in in my um, Paris branch that I just created in my project, and we'll talk about, you know, like what that means and and what we're doing there, the different files. But while we do that, what I'm going to go ahead and do 
is go ahead and create some uh, resources. So we'll go ahead and do that. That's going to start applying. And what we can go ahead and do, we'll go ahead and cancel. We won't install uh, anything during a demo. That would be uh, interesting to do. Um, so <clears throat> what I want to do is go ahead and call out is I have the definition that we were talking about. This is my uh, API description uh, that I'm working with. So uh, everything is, you know, as I put into uh, Apiary in my service, uh, and then I am now working in my um, uh, project. So of course, always the fun with live demo. So we'll see if I can get this to, uh, we'll just kick that. I had something on my network, I think. So we'll see if that runs. If not, then I'll just go back to it. Uh, excuse me, Rat. Arno speaking. Yep. Can you zoom a little bit on your windows for your demo? Sure. The screen is small. Certainly, small. certainly. Yep, yep, Thank yep. You very much. Let's see if I can. There we go. Is that good? That's it. Uh, yes, yes. It's much better. Excellent, excellent. Thanks. Okay, so, um, so yeah. So what's happening here? Is this, this is something that I'm kind of you know working with around is is with a cloud infrastructure, everything that we do that we build into our service is also accessible via API, it's accessible via SDK. Uh, it's it's also you can use Terraform. So we automatically have a Terraform provider for all of our Oracle Cloud infrastructure resources. And so what I've done here is I've built kind of a, a template model for deploying the API. Uh, and I have this built into Terraform. So I've structured this out to include things like my API gateway, uh, which is a module. Uh, I also have the API description where we're uh, uploading the swagger uh, or, or putting the swagger into API gateway or open API spec, I should say. Uh, and then of course, uh, the deployment itself and the configuration. And the thing is, is we can go about and templatize the um, uh, approach for deploying the API. So what's really valuable is instead of having all of our users go and choose uh, exactly how they're going to configure the API, it may be important to kind of apply a template-based approach to say, this is the required structure of the API. We can make changes and, and, and you know work towards uh, adding changes where necessary, but that should really follow a code promotion flow. And that should be part, as, as we would say, like infrastructure as code. So that's super important uh, that we go ahead and uh, be able to, um, you know, cover that in there. So that's basically what I have, you know, kind of uh, defined in Terraform. I have my project where I can check that project out. I have my, you know, open API definition uh, that I've created there. So if I go here, we can see that this is basically creating. And if I take a look at this, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, Switch out, well, actually just finished. So in my uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console, I was working with the Paris branch. So let's just go ahead and see what we have there. If we have that, uh, let's see, I don't have it yet. because we just reload. Maybe it didn't come up yet. Oh, I logged out, that's why. This is when, you know, good, good old live demos. Let's sit here and see if we can uh, run and get that in there. Okay, cool, so I got that logged in. All right, so I was working with the Paris branch. And so what we can see here is these resources have put it, been put in. I have an API deployment and I have uh, an API. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the API that I have here. Now, an important thing to note is I have my API, which is my description. Uh, I also have uh, a gateway that was created. So while we were talking, my gateway was created for me uh, while I was running that. Uh, the API and on that gateway, I also created a uh, deployment, which is the service as it stands now. So now one of the things that I can go ahead and do is I can come in and I can go ahead and work with this uh, and I can create another deployment. And so this is where I have what was in code, what was originally in my deployment connecting to my backend. And in this case, what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to select my newly created gateway I want to go ahead and say, you know, field service. Um, and then we'll go ahead and call this, I'm just going to call this Paris. Uh, and then I can go ahead and uh, uh, 
deploy this. I have a number of policies that I can go ahead and apply. But one of the things I wanted to call out is based on the definition, in our gateway, we create kind of a stock response. So we read in the definition, we create a stock response, and then we can go ahead and return uh, that response at runtime for users to be able to start testing against that API implementation. For us to start working against the um, uh, mocks or the stock response and to be able to apply policies and things like that uh, and be able to uh, work with that. So from this, we would create a new deployment and we would go ahead and work you know, with that. There's more that I would go show you, but I wanna go ahead and make sure that I stay on time. And so I'm coming up to kind of the end of my presentation time. So what I want to do is go ahead, uh, just switch over. And just to let you know, uh, that for uh, the services and stuff like that, if you want to go ahead and you know give it a shot, get, try it out, uh, you can try it for free. We have you know, two levels. You can try any of the services pr pretty much for free with a certain amount of credits, uh, $500 of credits, or there's an always free tier. And so that's permanently free. And so that's super important to be able to uh, do. So you can kind of try the services out and see how they go. Uh, and then, of course, we would love to get your feedback and, and love for you to start trying and working with uh, API management and also giving us feedback there. And so with that, I would like to go ahead and open it up for Q&A. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, so we have a, a few minutes for Q&A. Um, maybe a, a more open question about you are being oracle uh, how does apis impact the architecture of your solution from a broad perspective you have database you have api management you have many solutions uh, do you do you face some challenge that you could share with us about uh, transforming your solutions into API solutions offering APIs? Yeah, there's actually a number of challenges and a lot of it comes to um, the legacy that we inherited. Some of it we created uh, just for by the fact of being a large company and, and a long running company, but a lot of it is through acquisition. So you acquire you know, a product and they already have an API in place, right? They already have some sort of access measure. And so we really have to kind of transition that into a life cycle to uh, preserve that backend API uh, service and, and to be able to kind of provide that cap continue to provide that capability, but then look how we're going to transition that service going forward uh, and transition those APIs. And that's where the API lifecycle is super important, uh, obviously being able to kind of carry that through. Uh, and, and so for us, we're facing all of the same um, issues that ev everybody does, right? Uh, and so that's one of the things as we, you know, build Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and as we're building it, we are actually establishing what we internally call platform bars. And so everybody within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure use a common API uh, solution for what we call the control plane. They have to fit, you know, clearly defined requirements. But on the SaaS side, there's so many different products and so much configurability. It is a challenge. And that's something that we're working with with the API solution that we deliver is to be able to help them, you know, deliver their APIs. and move towards a much better developer experience you know as we continue forward yeah and to, to do that do you also you talk about more uh, technical perspective do you also have to uh you work also on kind of api governance to ensure that all of your apis looks like oracle apis or do you keep apis just as they are and do as you can yeah, so there are areas where we can apply governance, but we actually have multiple domains of governance. So the thing is, is, is you know, within our organization, we may have an infrastructure, we have an infrastructure governance. So that that is very strong in place. Everything has to follow a specific format. But then when you look at it, uh, we have multiple uh, industries. So we have things like hospitality and health sciences and communications and retail. And all of those industries also have their own you know, kind of models and approaches that they apply. So we do have multiple levels uh, of, you know, governance across. There's no one size fits all approach when it comes to that. And so that's the challenge that we're actually facing 
is when you look at it, it's an ecosystem of companies, you know, within one very large company. So uh, I hope within, like last year, I came to API Days Paris and talked about this gateway we were getting ready to release, which we released, you know, December of last year. And this is kind of you know, where we are to this point. I hope within next year and the next you know, five years that we really have a really good API management story of how we've been able to organize all of these organizations you know, and be able to deliver on the vision of proper API management uh, across SaaS and infrastructure, database, compute, everything. So yeah, that's, that, our, that's our goal. That could be an interesting story because <laughs> many people who work for large companies, are, uh, including myself, are struggling to make different type of business work in the same general direction. Thank yep. you very much, Robo.